Happy Birthday America! That's right, July 4th is upon us, depending on when you're watching this. You might be watching it after July 4th, but nonetheless, 241 years old America, and you don't look a day over 240. Although sometimes you do kind of act like you're 16 or so. Now, I know that's probably going to be met with a little bit of ire from some people. Oh, hey, how can you speak ill of America? Don't you love your country? I do. Hold on. But how can you speak ill of her? She is America. She is beautiful. She is all of those things, yes. But she is also flawed. And sometimes when you love something so much, you do have concern about the flaws that you see because you want for better. You want for this thing that you love so much to be as good as it possibly can be. Of course, I'm sure that I am to be indicted on the notion of, well, don't you believe in American exceptionalism? And yes, I do. I absolutely do. I just might see it a little bit differently than some others may. I'm sure, again, the question comes with it, but if you believe in American exceptionalism, don't you think that we are the best? Don't you just believe that? And to that, I would offer Something of an answer in league with Jeff Daniels' rant from episode one of The Newsroom. I'm sure that you've all seen this clip. Everybody's seen this clip. For Christ's sake, it ends up in everybody's Facebook news feed on a roughly once a week basis, or at least it used to. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just Google The Newsroom, Why America Isn't the Greatest Country. And then you'll see the clip, and then you'll say, oh yeah, I remember this. This used to show up in my news feed about, like, oh, on a once a day or once a week basis. You'll remember what I'm talking about. At any rate, that clip offers a look into the concept of American exceptionalism and, you know, lets you examine, are we really the best? And to that I say, absolutely, why not? I mean, aside from the reasons that Jeff Daniels talked about about why we aren't. But besides all that stuff, of course we are. We absolutely are. And there's a difference between American exceptionalism and American arrogance. Exceptionalism is when you see the potential in something absolutely great and you do everything you can to work towards it. Arrogance is when you just decide by definition, oh, it's obviously the best just because it is. It's American, so it's the best. We're American, so we're better people. That is arrogance. It's blind faith arrogance. If we just blatantly and somewhat blindly insist that we are the best, off of no more measure than who we are, are we really, in fact, being the best that we can be? Are we really raising our bar or are we just lowering our bar so that we can step over it easily and look back over it and say what great winners we are? I mean, sure, you might be driving in the car, but you might just be spinning your wheels. If the speedometer says you're going 100 miles an hour, are you really going 100 miles an hour? Or is it just that the wheels are going 100 miles an hour, but the vehicle is standing still? That's the trap that we get into if we just simply say that because we are Americans, we are exceptional. We need to keep America being exceptional. That's where I kind of look to another uh, person of history, Robert F. Kennedy, and I think that he has some words that, that really speak to what my version, my vision for American exceptionalism really is. And he said, there are those that look at things the way that they are and ask why. I dream of things that never were and ask why not. And so isn't that really something of a drive to be more exceptional? It's something that hasn't been achieved yet. Why not? We can do it. Yes, because we are American, but it's because we are Americans who want to be better, who want to have that drive, not just simply sitting back and saying, the way we've been doing it for the past 241 years is fine by me, and it's got to be the best because of that. So when people say that we can be educated, why not? When people say that they want clean air and water, why not? When people cry out for a society that is not bigoted and accepts other cultures, Again, I ask, why not? I believe that this is how we truly become even more exceptional, by challenging ourselves, by raising the bar, by asking questions and exploring truths, by challenging ourselves in our society to do better, to do more. And I think that of that comes with challenging ourselves to embrace that which is more intellectual instead of just going completely on gut and firing from the hip. We have great scientists here in America that do great studies. We have great schools and institutions of higher learning where they're doing the hard work. And that is what makes you better. Not just simply standing up on a hill and saying that you're the best, but actually putting in the hard work. 
And in addition to intellectualism, let's go back to the idea of putting in the hard work and everybody pulling their share, not just seeing how much they can get over because that's just the capitalist way. You're going to just try to get somebody over. Everybody's got an angle and writing that off. No, that is not exceptional. That is not exceptional and damn it, it needs to not be acceptable. When I think about the notion of, you know, everybody pulling their fair share and being proud to do so because it's the patriotic thing to do. It makes me think of an, a lady that I met back when I was working in a bank a number of years ago. Um, so I'm working at the bank and uh, one of our patrons comes in because she wants a cashier's check so that she can pay her taxes. So, you know, recognizing that she's coming in to pay her taxes, I want to be a little bit conversational about it. So I kind of make the joke about, oh, geez, too bad you have to pay those taxes, you know. Just, you know, because nobody likes paying taxes, right? And uh, she she met me with, with somewhat of a surprising response. And she looked at me and said, no, please don't say that. I am all too happy to pay my taxes. I am proud to pay my taxes. I write this check gladly every year. And I thought, okay, this is a nice take. And I let her go on. I live near the school and I look out the window every day and I see the kids going to, going to school and I know that my tax dollars are paying for part of that. So those children can have a better education and then they can move on and do their part to make this town a better place, even better than it is now, even better than this town that I love so much. And they can go on to make this state of Massachusetts a better state than it is right now that I already love so much. And they can make this country, the United States of America, even better than it is thanks to those things that I'm contributing to right now, thanks to the fact that I'm paying into these kids' education, even though they're not my children. And so it, it got me thinking about what my tax dollars go to. And, and you always hear the negativity and, and the cynicism about government spending, but damn it, it's from the same group that claims American exceptionalism. And they claim that their American exceptionalism is that, well, just we're Americans, so we're great. So why is it that largely this same group has problems investing in America? I just don't think it sounds very exceptional. So that's my take on it. But this is a conversation, so uh, please do uh, throw me your two cents and uh, let's make, again, let's make this a conversation points, counterpoints, supporting points, whatever you got, throw it in the comments section, folks. If you thought this was an interesting video or worth your while, go ahead and give me a like, maybe a share if you think that I said something worth sharing with others. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'll be happy to get to talk to you even more on hopefully maybe a weekly or even more so basis. My name is Ralph Cudworth, and I'm happy to have seen you here. And bring me beer. Free beer. Lots of it. Kegs. <laughs> kegs Lots of kegs. The best kegs.